the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago maintains alliances with many parliamentary associations, one of which is the Interparliamentary Union. The IPU was established to encourage dialogue among legislatures worldwide on a number of important parliamentary matters. Visits by representatives from the IPU provides our Parliament with an opportunity to strengthen ties with the association. This practice continued when the Secretary General of the IPU, Mr. Martin Chungong, visited the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago during the period March 5th to the 7th, 2015. He was accompanied by the Secretary of the Uruguayan Interparliamentary Unit Group, Mr. Oscar Piquinela de Campo. During their brief visit, the representatives from the IPU paid courtesy calls on the Speaker of the House, the Honorable Weed Mark, and the President of the Senate, Senator the Honorable Razia Ahmed. They then met with the Clerk of the House, Mrs. Jacqueline Sampson Miguel, and the Clerk of the Senate, Mrs. Nataki Atiba Dilchan, before meeting with the Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Keith Rowley. The representatives also toured the city of Port of Spain and visited the Parliament Chamber where they learned many important facts about the Legislature. The representatives also participated in a roundtable discussion with members of the Executive Committee of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and attended a sitting of the House of Representatives. Before returning to the IPU's headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland, Mr. Martin Chungong was interviewed by the Parliament Channel 11. What are some of the key features of a strong and active democracy? For us, democracy uh, generally uh, is a system. We, we always say that it is a system of government, but also it's uh, a system of values. And it is, uh, the beauty of it is that it is self-correcting. It is not, we don't think that democracy is a final product. It is work in the making all the time. Uh, so uh, we look at the issues of freedom of expression. We look at issues of free participation of the citizens in the governance of their country. We look at uh, uh, the existence of strong institutions of governance, especially parliament that is independent, that is accountable. Then when we look at parliament as a pillar of democracy, we define a number of core values that it should embody. First of all, b being representative, not only in terms of numbers, but also in terms of the issues that parliament deals with. You know, they have, parliament has to articulate the interest of society as a whole and not specific interest groups, for instance. Parliament has to be accountable to the electorate it has to report to the executive, uh, to the uh, 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 electorate all the time and take into account the views of the electorate. It has to be accessible. It shouldn't be an ivory tower. And uh, generally, it has to be effective. So these are things that we have identified as being the hallmarks of a strong uh, uh, democracy and parliament's uh, status within a democracy. You know, those are things that we are pushing for. A lot of what I have been told today by the presiding officers and the leader of the opposition in the House, uh, a lot of what they have told me uh, is uh, in conformity with this idea that we have of democracy. Uh, they all share the view that you need a strong, independent, autonomous parliament, and uh, this is a very legitimate ambition which we want to support. How can the Interparliamentary Union assist the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago to become a more democratic institution? The beauty of it is that the Interparliamentary Union, as the global umbrella of organization, parliaments, uh, has a variety of experiences and practices across uh, parliamentary jurisdictions. And uh, it offers an opportunity for uh, exposing parliaments to good practice good experiences around the world. It is something that the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago may want to avail itself of. This is an opportunity that is available to all uh, parliaments around the world. And uh, we are definitely uh, prepared to support the leadership and members of the parliament to uh, move towards that ideal of a democratic parliament that uh, has all those values that I've explained to you. Uh, it is something that is on our agenda, and I'm looking forward to pursuing these discussions with the authorities, especially so as they have uh, already put in place uh, 
what they call a strategic plan for the next seven years, which is uh, something that articulates their vision for the development of Parliament in Trinidad and Tobago. I understand that this uh, strategic plan has the support of both the governing and the opposition parties in this country. And so we think it's a good thing. It is important for Parliament to be in the driving seat of its own development. We should not be imposed from outside. What we in the Interparliamentary Union can do is to provide exposure to good practice and it's up to the Parliament to adopt those practices that they think best suit their circumstances here. Can you provide us with any details from the discussions that were held between you and the presiding officers of the Parliament? When it comes to uh, discussions regarding the functioning of uh, the Parliament here, uh, I was briefed by the two presiding officers on current efforts to reform the functioning of Parliament. After 52 years of independence, I understand, uh, the uh, efforts to build a strong committee system, look at uh, the issues of accountability, uh, providing uh, autonomy administratively and financially to the uh, Parliament, and a host of other issues which uh, I think uh, can help improve upon this Parliament so that it becomes uh, uh, a truly democratic Parliament in terms of being representative of society, in terms of being accountable to the people, in terms of being accessible and effective. So we discussed all of this and uh, I was pleased to uh, inform them that the Interparliamentary Union stands at their disposal to provide support in uh, moving this agenda forward. Madam President of the Senate was very keen on uh, women's political representation and I reassured her that that was one of my priorities at the IPU and that we can work towards building a coalition of women parliamentarians in Trinidad and Tobago to pursue gender related issues but other issues that have an impact on the people. On the other hand, we discussed the relations between the IPU and the parliament and uh, I told both presiding officers that one of my priorities is to take the organization to its members and to not rule the organization from headquarters in Geneva. And that is the purpose of my visit here, to reach out to uh, parliaments in the region. And uh, we are looking to Trinidad and Tobago to serve as an engine, as a locomotive for mobilizing the uh, parliaments of the Caribbean towards the IPU so that uh, this country can be a hub for the interparliamentary union in the region. So I received some very possible, uh, positive feedback from the two presiding officers, and we're looking forward to pursuing the discussions. Should parliaments adopt a system of autonomy? The principles of democracy, if you know, that you, you look at how government is structured, I mean government in the Anglo-Saxon acception of the word, that is the combination of the three arms, that is the executive and the, the judiciary and the legislative. The three have to work at arm's length of each other if they want to achieve effectiveness and efficiency. And there is a clear definition of uh, uh, roles and prerogatives it is important that each arm of government be allowed to uh, exercise its prerogatives without encroaching on the other uh, prerogatives of the other arms. It so happens that in many uh, jurisdictions, you have a very strong executive and a parliament that is not very strong. And we are saying that uh, if you want a good parliament, it has to be strong, it has to be independent, it has to operate at arm's length from the government, it has to be autonomous, that means it has to have the resources that it has control over to manage its own affairs and exercise the powers that are recognized or are enshrined in the constitution. We see the relationship between the government, that is the executive and the parliament, as one of partnership. Each one has a role to play, it being understood that both are working towards serving the interests of the people and that is the overriding concern that we have. How has your background in politics assisted you in completing your duties as Secretary General of the IPU? I will tell you something that I told uh, the members of the IPU when I uh, got elected last year Secretary General. 
I told them that I had never run for public office, and the first, uh, my first attempt at running for a public office was when I campaigned to become Secretary General of the organization, which means that I have spent most of, all of my professional life working with parliaments without being a politician myself. I am a technocrat at the service of the parliamentary institution. And I think that it has helped me to uh, view uh, parliament from a distance, but yet being close uh, to members of parliament. It has helped me forge uh, some uh, sort of independence uh, of views, how I see parliament functioning. I am not tainted, I would like to say, by being politically uh, sensitive to one side or the other. Uh, I adopt a technocratic uh, point of view when it comes to serving parliaments, which gives me the opportunity to work with uh, politicians of all political persuasions. I think it is important. And so, um, having worked with my own parliament, Cameroon, for uh, 14 years before joining the Interparliamentary Union, and uh, with uh, the exposure that I've had uh, to other uh, parliamentary jurisdictions, I can uh, have that overall view that enables me to provide the advice that is expected of me uh, with regard to uh, how to strengthen uh, parliaments around the world. So I know uh, the Westminster system very well. I know the semi-presidential systems that are applicable to many of the Latin countries and uh, the presidential system, so, for example, the one in the United States. So it helps me to have that broad picture that uh, I can now uh, place at the service of uh, parliaments that require such services. But what is Im uh, important is that uh, I think I know where the resources are, the knowledge resources are, and I can point uh, to those uh, resources when it comes to supporting a parliament like uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. What are some of the projects that have been implemented under your leadership since assuming office in July 2014? One major thing that I have tried to do is to open up the organization, is to uh, make the organization more visible uh, and if I want the organization to be more visible then I have to show that the organization is being more effective and one thing that I have done is to reach out to uh, parliaments uh, all over uh, the world. I have just been to uh, Paraguay. Paraguay is one parliament that has been very dominant within the IPU and I've come away with the conviction that they are now ready to re-engage with the organization. I'm here in Trinidad for the first time for me and uh, I'm going with uh, the conviction that the authorities in this country are very uh, positive towards engaging with the organization. So you have that uh, engaging with the membership that I think is going very well. I think also that uh, when it comes to visibility the organization has become more visible. I know in Geneva, where I have the headquarters of the organization, when I go around town, uh, the ambassadors in Geneva say, oh yes, we received a message from you today. You're becoming very active on the Geneva scene, which is encouraging. Our members have uh, uh, also applauded this fact. We have given, we've changed our visual identity transform the, to try to transform the organization into a more modern organization. It's an organization that has been around for more than 125 years and it tended to be very conservative in its approach to uh, communication. But we're trying to change all of this and we're uh, meeting with some success.